Hello everyone and welcome back for this video where I'm going to show you how to interact with the world objects uh, in UVRF in Unreal Engine using your own hands. And the reason I'm starting this video being in the real world instead of showing you my screen of Unreal Engine is because first I want to talk about how we interact with objects in the real world. Let's begin. We have four types of grab in UVRF. We have relative grab, we have fixed grab, and then we have directional grab where you can move the object just alongside one axis and rotational grab where you can just rotate the object alongside one axis. I want to talk about the first two, which is relative and fixed. And it depends on whenever the object that we have has a fixed or one true way of holding it or whenever it's doesn't really make sense. So as an example of relative object, I brought here a vibe tracker that you can see. And in vibe tracker, it doesn't really have one way that you can hold it. I can hold it like this, I can hold it like this, I can hold it like this, I can hold it like this if I'm going to screw it somewhere. And so many ways to hold it, neither of them is true or there's not a one true way to do it. And in this case of object, we would be using the relative grab. However, for most objects in the world, and I'm just going to show you one example. When I hold a teapot, there's one way of holding it. I just grab the handle and hold it uh, using the handle. If I'm going to hold a knife, there's, once again, one way of knowing it, holding it, and that's like this. Another example could be cell phone. Like, you know, when you doing your scrolling and exploring, uh, you're just holding your cell phone like this. Another example could be a lighter that you always hold like this so you can start the fire. Or for instance, since I'm filming this in times of COVID, I have a UV sterilizer that I can use to sterilize headsets and controllers, etc. So, and once again, just has one way of holding it uh, like this. So. In that cases, we will be going to use the fixed grab. It of course takes some time to fit it properly into your hand to alter the animation. It's not that easy to set up uh, as relative grab, but the result is well worth it if you are after believable uh, interactions and hand presence. So let's go to Unreal and check it out. We are now back in our Unreal Engine environment uh, where I have just placed some actors that are from different projects we have worked over uh, over the years. And I'll be showing you how to interact with those. So first of uh, all, we have the goggles here, which are some crazy steampunk looking goggles that are good, uh, good example of relative grab because you can grab them here, 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 here. It doesn't really matter. Second thing we have is lighter. Which is a good example of fixed grab because, uh, like in real world, there is just one way to hold the lighter and you just interact it always with this. So, it's a perfect example, and I'll be showing you even how to make the flame working. So, stay tuned. Well, second object is, or uh, oh, third object is a drawer that I'll be showing you how to move alongside this axis, like in real world. And the last object we have is the wheel with handle, which I'll be showing you rotational grab with. So let's get started. Uh, first, since all these objects are just static meshes, I'll delete them. I've placed them for the, for the intro. And we can start creating them again. So I have here a new folder called objects. And of course, for each object we want to interact with, we need to create a new actor. So right click where you want your actor to be, blueprint class. Just do actor. I'll um, call this goggles for the first one. Then we need to add the static mesh actually to the scene. So static mesh. Here I'll select the goggles. They are called Briella, which is the check word for goggles. I'll make it root. And second thing I need to do is to add a grabable component that is used to interact with the UVRF framework. And right now I just need to set up it. So I'll drag the grabable here and just call it uh, on begin play. Call set fixed grab function. Uh, no, 
set relative grep for, for this one. You'll get to fix grep later. So set, set relative grep. And you can see that the function is having two parameters. One of them is volume, second is animation. Volume is the reference for the primitive components, so static mesh, skeletal mesh, etc. you want to grab. So I will just drag and drop here the static mesh we have connected. And the animation is the animation of the hand when it's doing. Usually when you don't know what animation to pick, uh, fist is a good choice, so I will just get here fist, save, and hopefully, and I need to of course place it in the world. So I'll place the Googles here, and hopefully now when I come here, it will, I'll be able to grab it. So let me grab my index and give it a try. So here are the Googles. You can see the highlight is working as we were setting up in the, in the previous tutorial. And when I grab it, they just go nicely into my hand. And you can see that wherever I let them go, they just stay, which is because I didn't enable gravity. And I'll fix it in, in a moment. And I can gra grab them here, put it over. Uh, it's not going to work. I have, my head is too big. Or grab them here, or grab them by the lenses. It's doing whatever relative grab is supposed to be doing. So let's get back to Unreal Engine. And let me fix uh, fix that it's not simulating physics. Let me just hit simulate physics here. But that's not all. Uh, the thing I want to show you here is uh, a bit working with the uh, with the UVRF as well. So as you can see, when I select the grabable component, there are a lot of events I can subscribe to that are telling me when is something being done to the object. The first two, grab not notify and release notify, are telling me when I have grabbed the object and when I have let go on an object. So I'll just uh, create the uh, event here. And on the static mesh, I have set uh, vector parameter on materials that is saying volume. Right now it's light blue. Uh, it's called car, so when we grab it, let's, let's just make it red. And uh, when we release it, so on release notify, let's just make it, let's say blue. And let's give it a try. Fingers crossed, hopefully it's working. So uh, you can see the Googles f fell down to it, and when I grab them, yeah, the, the color of the lens will change. Now if I release them, it will change to blue. It will change to red again, blue. So that's our first object. And of course, uh, I don't think that you'll be using those grab and release notify to change colors, but Whenever you need an object to be aware of uh, if it's being grabbed or not, then those events are the one you should be using. Let's move to the next object. The next object we are going to cover is Lighter. Once again, we need to create a new vector. So I'll just go through it really fast as uh, you have seen the process. Last object, create Lighter. Then we need to add a static mesh component to it. Uh, select that is being a lighter. This time I am going to check the simulate physics box so I don't have to worry about it later. Uh, set, set it aesthetic, uh, set the static mesh extrude and then add grabable. And once again I'll go to begin play and then grabable do set fixed grab. As you can see that there are uh, two more Two more parameters, the grab transform left and right. The volume is uh, once again the same, so I'll just give it the static mesh to it. And the uh, grab transform left, right and animation basically determine uh, where the item should be positioned to be correctly in the hand. 
No, of course I don't want you or anybody to be doing this in hand by trial and error. So I'll just make, make the transform here and then I'll... Uh, and of course the transforms need to be different for left and right hand because the hands are different and some objects... Uh, uh, a knuckle controller is a good example of that. If it's in correct hand you hold it like this, if it's not then you probably hold it like that and place it into the correct hand. So the transforms are different for each hand, uh, even in real life. And then there's the animation. Uh, and now I will show you how to figure out those values. So if you navigate to UVRF content hands, then you can see here, I have two blueprints, hand post testing for the right, right hand and hand post testing left for the left hand. So I'll just open it, uh, go to viewport, and uh, there's an object called flashlight because the first I've ever used it with is flashlight. Mm, get a lighter in here, and first thing I need to do is to figure out the correct animation. So I'll select the hand, and there's a list of animations that we have. Uh, It's probably not, not, not the one I want to be using. Uh, there's even a specific animation for lighter, yes. Yeah, so you can see hand lighter. And there are some generic animations like the medium object, round object, big, round object, big two, round object, medium, thick object, thin object, etc. So for most of the objects you are going to be working with, uh, you can figure out a generic, uh, generic animation that uh, will fit the object. But for some of them you need to go to Maya, for instance, and create your own animation. So now that we have the correct animation here, uh, we need to position the lighter in uh, correct, correct position. So I'll just uh, choose here the grab base. Basically, for for the static mesh itself, you want here to be all zeros, and uh, all the transforms you want to be done on this scene component. Uh, that's mostly done uh, for historical reasons because uh, right now the uh, here it should, as its identity matrix, it shouldn't be transforming anything, but. When we started developing UVRF, uh, it wasn't working correctly, so uh, we are working around it using the using the scene component. And for scene component, now you need to rotate it and place it into the hand where it should be. So this is looking maybe like the correct angle. I need to rotate it like this. I need to place it a bit down. I'll slow the camera a bit. Still rotate it a bit like this. Move it a little bit to the back. And it's looking like I hold the lighter uh, in real life. Good, uh, good way to do it is actually grab the objects you want to be working with in real life. Like uh, you can see I have a lighter here that I can play with. Uh, the lighter I have here is quite smaller than the one we have in game. But generally, yeah, examine how you grab objects in real life and then transform that to VR, even like take pictures of it or one of the things I, would do, I was doing here when I was figuring out how to properly gr grab a lemon. I just was throwing lemons at my other workmates here at the office and see how they grab it and how they would hold it afterwards, so. And then, uh, then when you know how the pose looks in real life, then you translate it into Unreal. So this looks pretty good. And we need to, of course, uh, transform those values to, 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 the, to the blueprints. So I'll just make it here so I can see them. And I'll get this. Get this window a bit smaller and now I'll just copy the values so for right it's okay. I 
So th th that's for the right hand. Then I need to select the correct animation. So we know the animation is called hand lighter. So it's making this easier. And then I need to do the same thing for the for the left hand. I hope this was right hand. Yeah, it was right hand. So once again, I'll open it. Uh, set the set the correct animation here. We know it's lighter already, and I clicked the wrong thing. So it's hand lighter. Place the lighter in the scene. Play with the grab base uh, until it's properly rotated. So this, hey, nope, 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 nope. This, this, then position it inside the hand. Maybe like this. Yeah, it's looking quite good. And once again, we just need to. Wow, well, that. That's in one big, big window. We just need to copy the values from here to the to the other windows. Zero seven four twenty six minus. And as you can see here, the grab tents from left and right are looking quite different. And let's give it a try. Fingers crossed. Of course, I need to place the place the object in the in the real world. Close the hand post testing. Uh, so objects lighter. Place it on the second second platform. And fingers crossed. I'm, now I'm able to move. Yep, as you can see, it's working quite nicely. So that's it. But I have promised that I'll make the lighter work, so I'll just open it once again. And here I'll be adding a plane. And we'll have a flame like this. Let's rotate it. Okay. <laughs> it's always facing the camera, so but making it a a big weird sometimes. It looks a bit realistic. I don't want this to be doing it. It's probably not, not, not the correct way to do it. Okay, that, that, that's the problem when you rip uh, assets out from mega scans. Mm, I'll just delete the function for the word position object, so break pin links. And now it shouldn't be rotating, it will be a bit weirder, but and I want it here. So now we have the flame and we'll start with the flame not visible. And once again, since we have the grabbable object here, and we know that uh, when you press the lighter, I'll show you just once again, uh, you are doing it using your thumb finger. So in UVRF that's called the thumb action that will just translate automatically to the first of the face buttons that you have here. So it will work on index, touch, Windows Mixed Reality, Cosmos controllers, etc. So just click on thumb action 
and get plane. Set visibility to visible. And uh, when the action uh, ends, it will call thumb action stop. And it will automatically call thumb action stop when you let go of this object, so no need to worry about it. And we'll call it invisible once again. And now the lighter should be working. So let's see. Yep, as I can see, when I press the button, the lighter is working, so. That's how you interact with it. Of course, when you want to use the trigger button, it's essentially the same. You're just uh, calling index action and index action stop. Let's continue with the third object, which is a drawer. You know the drill by now. So just create a new actor, call it the drawer. A static mesh component, drawer. Make it seem known, edit a grabable component. Compile and begin play. We are going set direction grab. So you can see the direction grab uh, is having more, uh, even more, more, come on, more parameters. So first thing we need to figure out is uh, the axis we want to be moving. So let's just check the viewport and we can see that the axis, the drawer is aligned with this uh, axis Y, so it's going to be Y. Second thing we need to do is to figure where the grab point is, which is usually the handle. So it's a bit uh, in the front. The way I usually do it is uh, put a seam component in it. move the scene where I want to have the grab components. So as you can see, it's 32 points uh, in the Y. So that's the grab point. Volume is, uh, now I can do the scene. Volume is the same what it was. And there, there is even a new thing called highlight volume, which is the volume that should be highlighted when you hover over it. So for instance, if I would be having uh, the drawer as one mesh and then the handle as separate mesh, I want to be highlighting just the handle. So the drawer would be two volume. I want to actually move, but the handle would be the volume I uh, just want to just want to hi highlight. Uh, then there's distance min and distance max, which are... No, actually, let's give it a try like this. So I need to select an anime which is fist. And it should be, should be working and I'll get to it, get to it in a second. So let's see if it's working. Of course, I need to place it in the scene first and rotate it that it's towards us. Fingers crossed. You can see I can move it one axis. Now, you can notice this, that even if I move my hand quite a lot, uh, I'm still moving it as long as I'm grabbing it. So that's what the values are for. So open it. So the distance min and max are limits. I can move it. So for instance, let's say I want to just move it. Let's say 50 centimeters forward and the distance min will be noah. So let's set 50 here and it should not be moving past that point. Let's see if I'm right. It is moving past that point. So probably I need to set the min distance as well to something like, oh, maybe minus one. Ah, yeah, I need to ch check the check the enforced limits. I forgot about that. So when you want the limits to be enforced, you need to check enforced limits and then it will, 
it will make sure that you are within the within the limits you have set. So you can see it's not not moving past this point. It's still a lot. So so maybe the movement should be let's say it's, uh, 20 centimeters or 25. The second thing we have here is the distance tolerance, which is how far can you get your hand of the handle that it will still work. So let, let's just set it on 15 centimeters right now and I'll show you it uh, in the game. So as you can see, I can just move it and now I cannot move it even if I am still holding it. So let me grab it again and you can see it works quite well. I'm moving it right now, but if I move my hand outside, uh, it will just get released and now I can't move it anymore. So, of course, there's n not a haptic feedback in real life. You are holding a handle that's following you. So n now you're not, so probably you'll be using some movements uh, here. But if you move too far from it, fr from the grab point we have specified, then it will automatically release the object and you are no longer holding it. So, of course, you need to experiment with it. To what, what is the tolerance you want for each of the objects you want, maybe for this something more like 30 would be more appropriate. Let's give it a try. So I'm still holding it, you see, even here I'm still holding it, now I'm still holding it, okay. Here I release it, so, so 30 is a bit too much. There's a haptic effect uh, when you release it, so you can feel it a bit but you cannot see it, so let's get it back to 15, it worked quite well. And that's it for the, for the directional grab, so let's save it. And we have our last object, which is the wheel. So for the last time today, let's create a new actor. I did a static mesh to it. Static mesh is wheel with handle. Make it root, edit a grabable. And we'll be using set rotational grab this time. As you can see, it's very similar to the to the directional grab uh, parameters because they are working mostly the same. Uh, first thing we need to figure out which axis are we rotating around. So let's just well, I cannot rotate it when it's when it's root. So I'll just take this and we are rotating it on the x axis. So that's correct. Second thing we need to figure out where the handle is. So I'll just move my scene here. It's a bit too low. This, this, so it's looking from the top. Okay, now it seems to be a good point. So 16, 17, 2, let's say. So the grab point is 16, 17, 2. Of course, I need to plug in the volume and highlight volume. I have explained them just a moment ago. So you probably know it. And right now it should be working as well. I should uh, set the grab and I'm, for those directional and rotational grab, I always use the animation face because there are so many ways to grab a handle. You're not going to be able to animate properly. Let's give it a try, place it into the scene, and let's see. And you can see I can rotate it just fine using it. And as you can see, as I haven't set the distance tolerance, uh, whatever I do with it, it will just follow me from any distance. So. The rotation min and max and enforce limits are working exactly the same way as in 
directional grep, so I'm not going to bother explaining this as is the distance tolerance. But I'm going to show you one more thing. And that is the move notify event. Because as we rotate the objects uh, both for directional grab and rotational, it will give us the move notify which is going to tell us what value is it related to center. So I can just uh, do a print string here. to see how it's working. So let me get to it. And when I rotate it, you can see it's not working. Hmm. Why are you not working? Tell me. Maybe because I need limits? Is that so? Okay, now it's working because I have set up limits. Uh, don't worry about this. I'll actually fix it uh, in UVRF be before I, I release it as I'm recording these videos uh, a bit earlier. So you won't need to set li limits to be able to get, uh, get move notify. Th that's my bug I have just discovered. Don't worry about it. But uh, it's a bit strange to be setting up just a print string, so let's do something a bit funny. Mm, maybe divide it by 1000 and allow it to move. 1000 and plus 1. Now we'll make vector from it. It's a vector scale in 3D. So, if I did my homework correctly, should now be able to scale scale the wheel using turning. As you can see, it's shrinking, and now it's expanding. That's totally not possible in real life, just in VR. I guess that's it for today. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope that I was able to explain the types of graphs and interactions we have in VRF and I'm looking forward what you will be able to build with it. The next tutorial is going to focus on the UMG elements we have in VRF, so check it out. Until next time.